Hey, honored to be part of the webcast. I want to thank, first of all, Armanino, uh, Inside Sales, Click Dimensions, and Microsoft. You guys are awesome, unbelievable for you to offer this kind of value to your clientele, to entrepreneurs, to business owners, and sales teams around the world. Really appreciate you thinking enough of me, number one, uh, to share this content with your people. And number two, for all of you that are watching, particularly the audience, I want to thank the audience, all of you out there taking the time Invest in your time and your energy. Your time is more valuable than anything else. And um, uh, my goal is to help as many people as I possibly can grow and build their business. Uh, again, I'm honored and humbled that, that you would spend your time, invest your time and energy with me because you could be doing something else. Look, here's the facts, okay? We're talking about cold prospecting today. We're talking about how to fill a pipeline up so full until it just gushes on you, okay? Now, now I've started... I started and operate today five companies, uh, six companies I actually started. One of them failed. I sold it actually before we dissolved it. And But uh, of the six companies, five are extremely successful. We'll do just shy of $100 million this year in sales. Nobody knows me. Nobody knew me when I got started. Okay, The whole deal was how do I get people to know me? Obscurity is the biggest killer, is the biggest destroyer of great ideas. Uh, obscurity is the giant killer of all great ideas and great talent. So if people don't know you, uh, they're not going to buy from you. It will not matter whether you have the next holy grail or holy bread or whatever it is. The perfect product will not, cannot possibly um, solve problems if people don't know you. So we're gonna be talking today about how do you leverage, and, and look, you'd be, you'd be crazy, we would be crazy not to embrace technology today and leverage the technology of CRMs like Microsoft Dynamics. We'd, we'd be ignoranuses not to use scrubbing mechanisms and predictive analytics uh, that, that are provided by inside sales or marketing automation and drip campaigns. I use all these here at my office. Most of this stuff, I don't even quite put my head all the way around, but I'm always looking at, as a business owner, how do I use uh, retargeting? How do I use marketing automation? How can I use a drip campaign? How can I make it look authentic uh, and, and organic and communicate with a, an email list or somebody I found on Facebook? How do I use all the streaming mechanisms today? Oh, by the way, how do I also go out and knock on somebody's door or use their phone? How do I combine old and new technologies? Because the reality is this, okay? You'd be foolish not to use technology whether it's old or new, you be foolish and you will be unsuccessful if you don't. So today we're focused on cold prospecting. How do I take somebody off a of LinkedIn or Facebook stream? How do I use uh, uh, maybe Google.com? How do I use Google Plus or an email list? Or, hey, Jared gave me a lead. Or I was on the phone with Inside Sales and Microsoft and they're like, Hey, we got a sales organization and uh, there's another department, another person, they run that, but you really should make that phone call. This is called cold prospecting. How do I fill my pipeline up so full that I got so many leads I don't have to pay for advertising? Well, the benefits, first of all, for me to learn anything, I got to go back and say, why am I learning this? All right. I wish they would have done this for me in school when I was in the fifth grade. I didn't know why I was going to math class or English class. Okay. Well, you got you to know how to read. You got to know how to count. Why? So first, first you got to know benefits. What are the benefits of cold prospecting? Because look, nobody wants to cold prospect and nobody wants to make a cold call. Number one, you don't have enough leads, okay? You don't have enough leads. You need to understand you don't have enough leads. Your bank account, your bank account is determined by the leads you have. Your business's success is determined by the leads you have. The, the uh, success of your business in the future is determined whether or not you're out of obscurity. Do people know me? Do I have a lot of leads? My closing ratio is going to be low, okay? You know that, I know that. The way not to be frustrated with a low closing ratio is to have lots of leads. It solves all problems, okay? Number one, you don't have enough leads. Lots of leads solve lots of problems. It means I don't have to spend as much money in advertising. It means my salespeople don't have to be as good. It means I don't have to worry about scripts as much, even though I still need a script. And I can actually be dissatisfied with my conversions, no, I just said it. I just said what every executive doesn't want to put up with. Our, our conversions suck. That's right, they do. Dude. They suck. Okay, they're always going to suck. They're going to suck forever. 
Uh, so get you lots of leads, okay? And then you can start working on how do, how do I get better at converting these leads? Number two, your income depends on your pipeline. Your paycheck your, depends on your pipeline. The savings account you have depends on your pay, pipeline. 76% of all, all individuals in America live paycheck to paycheck. Over 50% of salespeople miss quota. Why? Because they don't have a full pipeline. Uh, I traveled to Indianapolis yesterday. I went to Indianapolis. We flew out of Miami yesterday. We had a meeting there. We saw seven clients while I was there. I keep filling my pipeline up. So while I was there, while I had a meeting there, while we had a meeting with uh, 12 decision makers of a, a Fortune 1000 company, uh, we also did seven other meetings there that were cold. Walked in. Hey, I'm in town. Just want to say hi to you. These are cold, okay? I know the list. I pulled the list. Hey, let's do a list from people that have done business with me. I went over a list of about 50 people in Indy. I'm like, I know those people, those people, those people, those people. We targeted seven out of the 50. Stopped by, walked in. Hey, what's going on? Man, I don't have time for you today. Still walked in, still said hello. Hello. Now, today we're going to follow up on a phone and then an email and then add those people to a drip campaign, right? I'm going to maximize technology and muscle. Just old, traditional stop-by, drop-in. Uh, but again, you got to know the benefits. Why? Hey, man, my paycheck. I need a paycheck. My kids, my kids. I cannot send my kids to private schools if I don't have prospects in my pipeline. I don't have the money. I'm out of money. I can't pay for the things I want and the things my family deserves unless I have a lot of cold prospects. We have a t-shirt that says, who's got my money? It reminds my sales staff, who's got my money? Somebody I don't yet know. Okay. So remember, you want a cold prospect because the people you don't yet know are the ones that can, one, give you money, and number two, for your service or product, and number two, make your company better known. Number three, cold prospecting is how you scale a business. It's how you scale a business. Now, most startups today in Silicon Valley are not spending marketing and dollars and advertising dollars on becoming known. What they're doing is they're starting to get a notoriety, okay, and out of obscurity because of some breakthrough, something they did. They get covered by a convention or a conference, right? They get they get picked up in a Wall Street Journal or Bloomy, uh, 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 Bloomberg's, right? They get they get some coverage or they did a webcast. Now, this studio that I'm sitting in today is a cold prospecting uh, innovation. Basically, it's a tool. We we basically use this studio. Man, how can you spend that much money on a studio? Can you, can you open this? This just went to a USA Today thing. How can you spend so much money on a studio? Dude, how, how can you make sense of not having prospects? Right? I need prospects. We use this studio to deliver content. Uh, I was at Fox News. Fox News did a, a story on me. and My book was coming out, Seller Be Sold. And uh, it was actually my third book. If you're not first, your last was coming out. I was on Neil Cavuto's show. I talked about this book being a pipeline filler, that a business could literally explode if they knew how to prospect, being first in the buyer's mind. And he's like, that sounds like a Tagadale of Nights, uh, whatever that movie was. I'm like, no, no, dude, it's about being first on the buyer's mind, out of obscurity. Obscurity kills businesses. Cold prospecting, Cavuto, is what I'm doing today on your show. And he's like, what? I thought you were here to talk about the book. I am doing cold prospecting. I'm doing cold prospecting. That's what I'm doing on your show today. He's like, I can't, but you're shamelessly plugging your show and your business. Needs to charge. You're, you're shamelessly plugging your, your business. I said, hey, man, that's what businesses must do today, and I'm using Fox News. Now, I'm telling you that to tell you this. Everybody that's doing cold, cold prospecting, you need to be thinking about how do I get media attention for my name? How do I break out of obscurity? You have to know the benefits, okay? Number one, you don't have enough leads. Number two, your income depends on your pipeline. And number three, you got to scale your business. I'll do anything to get people to know me. Anything. What I'm doing right now is getting people to know me, okay? How can I multi-purpose this content and throw it up on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, how can I take pieces and parts of this and throw it right into the right places? Oh, by the way, how can I take a link to this video and send it out to my client list that yesterday I went to Indianapolis to see and six of the seven couldn't see me? You understand? I want to use, I want to intertwine all these technologies. How do I start help getting inside sales and, and, and um, technologies? 
to help me basically scrub content to find out who is the best lead in my marketplace. How do I most maximize, uh, maximize this? And if you're a manager right now, you're asking, dude, why don't people do this now? Man, I love, I love what you're telling people, Grant. My, I can't get my people to do this. Yeah, you know why? Because it's hard. Why don't you just tell people the truth, man? It's hard, okay? And then why don't you tell them the other half of this truth? It's hard to fail, okay? Folks, look, it's hard, not, it's hard to get by on too few leads. It's hard to feed your kids when you don't have money. It's hard to buy organic foods making 40 grand a year. I'm just telling you the truth. Failing is hard. Cold prospecting is hard. Success is hard. Failing is hard, okay? Warm, call, call, uh, warm calls are, uh, are hard. Cold calls are hard. Look, I've had calling my family is hard. It's all hard. Everything's hard. So what? You got to pick your heart. You want to fail or you want to succeed? I believe this. Succeeding is actually less work than failing. So is cold calling hard? Yes. Okay. Is calling on seven businesses yesterday and only six of them see me hard, being away from home, getting on a plane, flying all the way over there. Is being rejected difficult? Yes, it is. So what? Just tell people the truth. Number two, the reason people don't prospect is because it's easier for your company to advertise. You, you guys and gals would rather spend money to create a lead. It's easy. I write a check, I get a lead. Maybe. For instance, we're getting ready to drop an ad campaign on CNBC and Fox Business. I'm going to bury the radio I'm with my name. Every morning when you drive to work, you're going to hear Grant Cardone is the greatest salesperson on planet Earth. You're going to hear basically uh, uh, some, some semblance of that ad, right? Now, we've held off on that ad for six years because I've been having to warm the market up so that when I drop the ad, while you're driving down the road, you're like, I think I heard of that guy before. See, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm every day, every day I have a priority. Call prospects, build a pipeline, warm it up, get your name familiar in the marketplace so that when I do spend money in advertising, I'm going to spend more money this year in advertising than I've spent in the last 25 years combined. Because for 20 years, I've been warming that market up. I shouldn't tell you it's been 20 years because really it's only been five. For the last five years, I became aware of how to use technology like I'm discussing today, like you're being provided today, like it's available to everybody today if you embrace it. Click Dimensions and Microsoft. You unbelievable inside sales have unbelievable webinars right now to distribute and disseminate your, your word. And Armanino, what you're doing right now for your clients to say, hey, I can scrub data, I can get predictive analytics, so you can know who to drop into, who's most likely to buy, who's most qualified, who's looking. See, I can use Facebook like that today if I do the right thing and have the right creativity with building a pipeline. Wait, why don't I do a pipeline on a webcast on how to build leads? Who would watch that webcast? Companies that want leads. Now what do I know? I'm a sales training organization. I'm gonna go watch those leads. Hey, post, your, you post in Facebook. Uh, in, a, in a live stream, mentions or Periscope, post your company so we can collaborate and I can network you with the right other people. Who doesn't want to disseminate their own name? They drop in comments on my Facebook stream. I did this the other night. We had 4,900 comments. Half of those were companies saying, I'm an organization that needs leads. And every organization that needs leads needs to know how to convert leads and that's what we do at my company right so those become leads for me I'm basically taking a cold prospect saying come out show me your face okay give me your name give me your email and then I can start contacting those people now again I'm gonna go back why do you need to do this because you got to know the benefits you got to know why people don't do it you got to know this is a priority okay number three your company is not requiring this to be done right now see see the reason your people don't cold prospect right now is number one it's hard number two you you, you advertise you basically make it easy for them you give them so many leads it's unbelievable right you just spend money to advertise and they're like why am i going to call somebody cold i got a lead here then they complain about the leads these leads suck okay number three they're not required management management require your people to do the cold prospecting and and don't say did you say show me did you go see those people? By the way, we need to ask Keith who he actually saw yesterday. Show me who you went and saw. And then management follow up. Hey, my guy went in there yesterday. Uh, no, he didn't. Then fire that guy for lying to you. So you have to, as a company, I know Microsoft, you, you, you know, oh, 
No, we, 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 don't, we don't treat people like that. No, no, you guys need to start pressing people so they fill their pipeline up, so they properly use the technology. The technology developments today are so unbelievable, but look, unless you got a big freaking heart and lots of passion and a commitment, your people are not gonna utilize the technology. They're gonna say it didn't work. No, you didn't work. Management didn't work. We didn't press people to be great. Number four, people are not properly motivated. Uh, 72% of people are disengaged at their jobs. I'm talking about people making lots of money, a little money, and barely getting by. People are disengaged with their jobs. So your job, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. Everybody wants the abs. Nobody wants to go to the gym, right? Everybody wants to be in great shape, but then they want to sit down and eat Oreos, okay? Everybody wants to be famous, but they don't want to show up for the audition. You got to pay the price. Pay the price today so you can pay the price tomorrow. Get your people properly, pro properly motivated. All right, let's talk about some best practices for cold prospecting. How about we do that? Number one, existing customers. Why would I go after people I don't know when I got people that, that I do know? People I've done business with, maybe they're good for a second sale. Maybe it's about thank you. Maybe it's about who do you know, okay? Hey, John, just thinking about you. Anything we can do for you? Uh, Grant Cardone here, you bought our program. I noticed you have unbelievable usage right now. And you're really doing great with the program. Uh, talked to one of your people yesterday. They said you're really winning with it. Let me ask you a question. Who do you know like you, committed like you, professional like you, interested like you, motivated like you? Who do you know? So I'm going to go start with existing customers. Number two, employees, people within my own company. I got people in work in every department here. I go to them all the time, okay? Once a week. Hey, who do you know? I go to the shipping department, the accounting department. I just fired an accounting person because I'm like, you've been here three months and never gave me one lead. What's wrong with you? You're trying to tell me you don't know somebody that doesn't need our product or are you just disengaged? You're just not interested. You're not on the team. I need everybody, every department, not just the sales department, generating leads. I was working in a car dealership. I went to the service department. They have 80 employees in the service department. Hey guys, when's the last time you gave the, the, the sales department a lead? Why not, okay? Why does not the seamstress at the clothing store give leads to the sales department when we know she knows people? Why does the laundry, uh, the laundry, the cleaner, not get the people taking tickets for the cleaning, not make sure their family and friends actually clean clothes at that same laundry mat, okay? So work your families and friends. Now, all the social streams, all the social connections, the LinkedIn, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Snapchat, all these are different tones, different personalities, and different opportunities. Clearly, LinkedIn is the monster, it's the king, it's the Mac Daddy, because there's professionals basically dropping into a space saying, this is a career space, this is a professional space. I know those are business owners, but don't neglect. How many people were on that Facebook stream? Can you pull it up? Just now, 20,000 people joined a stream on Facebook. Now, people would tell me Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook are not as good as LinkedIn for draws. If the content is, if the content that I'm delivering is business related, if my Facebook channel is about pushing business, not pictures of my kids, if it's about delivering great content to salespeople, sales organizations, companies, about growing and expanding, I'm going to get those clients. So it is really the intention of that channel that is going to drive whether there's interest on that channel or not. Somebody asked me recently, hey, what do you like for cold prospecting? Which channel do you like the best? Uh, I like the one they're on, okay? If you're asking what social medium does somebody like the best, you don't understand social media, okay? I like them all the best, particularly if you're there and you're interested in my product, okay? Blogs. I write a blog every day or a article. I don't really even know the difference between a blog and an article today. But every day, every day, I use Medium, LinkedIn, entrepreneur.com. Where else do we post? Uh, Business Insider, Huffington Post. I'm writing something to somebody. If I got to buy a PR release, I will, okay? I am writing something to someone every day and I multi-purpose that content. Typically, I'll turn a blog or a LinkedIn article into a video. Okay, so I'm going to multi-purpose everything, and I'm going to send those links out to clients. How many email strategies will we send out this week to our, to our database? Millions. Okay, millions. I got, I got an email uh, 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 list that's big. 
I use it over and over and over again. I do not worry about people saying, hey, take me off your list. Unsubscribe. Don't send me anything. I send people lots of stuff. If you don't want to be on my list, tell me. I'll take you off. No problem. I'm going to replace you with somebody else that wants to be on your list. I reward clients for adding people. You understand? I do shows. I constantly deliver shows like this. Every week we're delivering shows, book reviews, business book reviews, okay? Network marketing shows. Why would I do sh shows on network marketing? I'm not a network marketer because I admire network marketing. I'm not there to promote the company. I'm there to promote the industry. Why would I do a roofing conference? I'm not a roofer. Look at me, okay? Why would I do a, why would I do a stream on a conference, on a sales meeting I did in New York City where I'm negotiating uh, with a guy named Charles Koppelman and his group. Why would I do that stream? Because it shows the insides of a business meeting and it attracts the right people. So think creatively. Commit to building this, taking this cold planet we live on of 7 billion, 7.3 billion people. How do I warm these people up to my message? I know they're not all there. Shows, webinars, industry-related successes. We just did a roofing conference. Uh, there was 500, 600 roofers in the room extremely successful. What do we do now? We come home, we make a list of every roofing group that we can find uh, using the technologies available. Scrub it, do predictive analytics. I want to know every roofer in this country, anybody that has anything to do with roofing, tacking, insulation, anything and everything to do with a roof. Uh, and I want to contact you. Hey, when's your next conference? Are you going to a conference? I just spoke at a conference. Now i got to start making those calls or those emails. It could be a cold email. It could be a cold call. It could be dropping in on their Facebook page or it could be this. How do you win a battle? You do it all. Okay, you do the air. You do the foot campaign. You do it all. You do everything. Why would I go from the air? We know those campaigns don't work. I'm going to drop in and use every piece of technology I can. Now, the basics of prospecting are this. Number one, you got to have the right attitude. I know you're watching this right now saying, this guy's a freaking animal. I am. Okay. It's on my chest. Okay. I got a tattoo. It says beast, the beast. I say that kiddingly. I don't need a tattoo. Okay. I am a beast. I am committed to growing my business. And I know growing my business is not about me becoming likable by everybody. It's be me becoming known by everybody. Some people are not going to like my de delivery today. So maybe some of the companies here that sponsored having this webinar for you today will be like, yeah, he took it a little far when he said that. My job is not to get everybody to like me. My job is to get, and your job is to get everybody to know you and fill that pipeline up. You, you're trying, you gotta have the right attitude. You're trying to get everybody to like you because your pipeline is too narrow. Broaden that pipeline up, get everybody to know you, and you can have the attitude, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I have a great company, I have a great product, we have great value, we help customers, now I can get everybody to know me because I have that attitude of like, I'm, I'm breaking out of obscurity. Number two, activity level needs to be enormous. I can't rely on one webinar or one blog or one article or one post or one stream or one social media or one phone call or one email. The activity must be at enormous levels. I wrote a book called The 10X Rule. Most people that read The 10X Rule, except for one person that called me three years later and said, 10, does 10x mean 100? I'm like, dude, you're the first person that got it. 10x really wasn't about 10 multiplier. It was about 100. Multiply times 100, okay? So you need enormous uh, activity levels, enormous. We, we have salespeople in my office that make 400 to 500 phone calls every day to cold customers. Expectations. The expectations you have on yourself, your company, your group should be, again, at the right level. People fail because their expectations are too low. People quit, quit their goals, quit making phone calls, and quit prospecting because their expectations are not correct. If you get a 1% or 2% return rate on cold, hey, pat yourself on the back. You're in the, free, you're in the money, okay? Have reasonable expectations, okay, on, on the, 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 the hit rate and have unbelievable expectations of the activity level. You understand? So don't get disappointed because you only had a 2% conversion. Have an enormous push up for activity. That's the only way you're going to get that number up. Will you get better? Yes. Okay. But the only way you're going to get great at anything is frequency. You got to get high expectations of activity in order for anybody to get better, no matter what the script is. Now, look, we build scripts here for a living. 
for companies. We did, we literally customize scripts and customer uh, experience processes for companies around the world. All right, I don't care how good that customer uh, process is or the script is. No matter how perfect it is, if I have one person to talk to, it's still one person. Okay, if I convert it 100%, it's still one person. Nobody's gonna. Oh yeah, we did great. With one person. No, you're going to think you were lucky with one person. It won't have anything to do with the script. So what you got to do is you got to get that frequency and activity. You got to go wide and you got to get great, okay? And you got to do it daily. The only way prospecting, prospecting is going to work is if you're doing it every day. If you're thinking every day. I'm writing a book right now and I talk about, I talk about hiring and recruiting. And you're like, what does this have to do with hiring and recruiting? Hiring and recruiting is the number one way to grow a business. It's not through customers. It's through great talent internally, right? This is a major problem. How do I recruit great talent? How do I recruit great talent? I'm gonna recruit great talent to do that. What I wanna be doing is I want to be looking as a priority for great talent. There's a gentleman named Larry Van Tile. He's a multi-billionaire real estate developer. And Larry, when Larry looked at anybody, he did, he, all he could see, he'd look right through you, okay? And all he's looking at is, I wonder if he'd work for me. I wonder if I can get him to work for me. He's always recruiting. Now, that's the way I want you to think as a business owner. Always be recruiting for talent and always be recruiting for this. If, if they're not going to work for me, are they going to buy for me? Are they going to buy from me? Will they buy from me? Do they know somebody that would buy from me? What size are you? Like if you're selling clothes, what size is this guy? Boy, that jacket would look good on Look at his shoe size. Always be looking for somebody to be a prospect. Now, this has got to become a priority in your company. Before any kind of predictive analytics work, before the CRM works, before any, anything is going to work, before any technology, you got to get this massive desire to say, is that a prospect? Is that a prospect? Is that one? And talk about it every day. And then start teaching people the tools and the strategies behind this. Look, if there's no heart, there's no, there's no body, right? It doesn't matter. There's got to be some heart. And then there's got to be a strategy. And the strategy is critical. When you ask for a referral, just go to your staff today and say, hey, ask me for a referral. They're going to want do one of three things, and I guarantee you they're going to do the two wrong things more often than the right thing. In fact, I'd probably, I'd be willing to give you, I'd be willing to give you this ebook if anybody in your company asks the right way. Okay, the right way to ask for referrals, who do you know? And your people won't even make, do, ask for the right question. They, they won't even ask the right way. They're going to ask this, do you know someone? They're going to ask, send me someone if you ever run across them, or they're going to say, Here's my card. Send me somebody if you know somebody. All of those are wrong. The right way is, who do you know that would benefit from my product? Who do you know that would benefit from my service? Who do you know that, that, would, uh, that you would want to do business with me? Who do you know, not do you know, not send me someone and not, here's my card, send me somebody, because you'll never get a lead like that. So proven strategies when either making a call or an email or a physical contact. Number one, you need a script. You need some kind of pitch. You need some kind of process or road to the sale, just like you would in a marketing campaign, a drip campaign. I don't want to send out the same email every time, right? I need a different email because he responded or she responded to a different thing. So I need scripts, just like you would in marketing automation. You want a human being to have a script or series of scripts. For instance, this is a webcast that we did. It was a five-hour webcast. I think there's 104 pages uh, ebook that, that I delivered over five hours about how to use a telephone to make cold calls. There's hundreds of scripts in here. There's basically scripts for different things in different situations. So number one, you need scripts. You need lots of scripts. Number two, I don't know you. You could open a call, walk in, call, or send an email that opens with, I don't know you. Is it true? You don't know me and I don't know you. Many of you today that joined us you never heard of my name, okay? You don't know who I am. You're like, who am I? So they introduce me, right? Brad gives me an introduction. I'm going to turn it back over to Brad here in a little bit. You might not have known me before this. So Scott gives me an introduction, tells, me, tells you who I am, gives the bio. So you could open your call, your email. Hey, look, you don't know me and I don't know you. That's a technique, a strategy. Jerry, you don't know me and I don't know you. Okay, I've cold called companies before. Walked into their company and said, hey, you don't know me and I don't know you. I was in a company in Salt Lake City last week. I'm talking to the receptionist, is trying, a gatekeeper that's trying to get me to the president of the company. I went there cold without a meeting, without an appointment of a company that's got thousands of employees. And I expect to get in the front door. I had a few minutes. 
in between meetings. I drop by. I'm still working. Tell Grant, tell uh, tell Scott Grant Cardone's here. Uh, does does uh, does he know me? Do you know me? The question is, do you know me? You don't know who I am. See, now I just took this question and didn't make it a question. I made it a statement. You don't know me. See, that's really a question. Look, you don't know me and I don't know you. That's a statement, right? In this case, I said, you don't know me and turn it into a question. He's like, uh, yeah, maybe I do. You look familiar. God, never seen me before in my life. Never heard of me ever. Okay. But basically you create the illusion with your confidence and your attitude and the willingness to say, look, I have a great product. I have a great company. Scott's expecting me. I'm in town. I left a message for him, by the way we did. I sent him an email before I came in, by the way I did. See what I'm doing? I'm using every piece of technology possible. And he gets my, he's on my email strategy every week. See what I'm doing? I'm covering him up from every angle, all right? Number three, be memorable. You need to be memorable. I love business cards as much as anybody else. They're not that memorable. What do people do with them? Uh, let's see. I'm throwing it away. So you got it. You got it. You got to be memorable. You, you, I know people that spend more time, more energy, and more money on how fancy their card is or their, their, their uh, piece of paper they send an email out on or their website than they do their own personality. you got to become memorable. Like me or hate me. It doesn't matter. Okay? Please know me and please remember me. Like me, love me, or hate me, but please don't forget me. Uh, number four is use third-party information to validate. So whoever you do business with, you need to let that be your leader, okay? I just left the Pentagon. I tell everybody I left the, 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 the Army. I'm working with the military. I just left the Pentagon, okay? I was just ranked, uh, just given top 10 most influential CEOs in the world. What, should I not tell people that? No, that goes on everything that I do now. I go Pentagon, top, top 10 most influential CEOs in the world, why wouldn't I tell people? You must toot your own horn and use third parties to validate and bring you out of obscurity and cause people to want to do business with you. Okay, your script. You ready for this? This is a proven script. I'm going to give you the basics. One little script here just because of time. Number one, greet. One name only, not two. Don't say I'm Grant Cardone with Smith Jones, ABC, Bakalakada. I'm with the Abahama. Hum. You, I can't even keep up with the name of the company. Your name, I got lost, okay? So I wouldn't say I'm Grant Cardone with Cardone Enterprises or Grant Cardone with Grant Cardone uh, Real Estate Acquisitions. I just say, hey, my name's Grant, okay? The reason I'm calling, the reason I'm calling, now this becomes very complicated. Am I talking to a gatekeeper? Am I talking to a decision maker? Am I talking to an influencer? Those, there's a different script for every one of those, okay? Let's say I'm talking to the decision maker. The reason I'm calling you is I was working with Jared over at ABC. He told me to give you a call, okay? I was working with the Pentagon recently. Your name came up as someone that might be able to use my services, okay? Number two, the reason I'm calling is the big claim. I help them do X. He said you might be interested in that. The third step, qualify the lead. Is there a recurring problem you have? I'm going to give you four points here. Recurring problem, magic question, a money question, or DM, decision maker, okay? So I might ask this. Is there a recurring problem? We're a sales organization. We went into the Pentagon. We went into this company, okay? I was just ranked the number one, top 10 CEOs, uh, most influential CEOs in the world, okay? We help companies become more influential on social media. Do you have a recurring problem with becoming uh, known on social media? Well, no, we don't use it all. Would you consider that a, a, a recurring problem? Yes, I would. Okay, number two. If, would you invest $30,000 to solve that problem if you could become one of the top, most influential people in the world in your space? Uh, yeah, I would spend. Now, I just brought up my price right there, okay? C, money question. Are you a decision maker at this level? By the way, I'm combining C and D now just because of time. Would you be the person to make a decision on this and or would there be other people influencing that decision? Now, what I just did in a cold pitch is brought up my price, made monster claims, told them where I came from or her or she came from, set a hook called a magic question or a hook, and found out whether I had the decision maker or not. Fourth thing I'm going to do is ask for an appointment. Even if I'm in front of them, ask for an appointment. Is now a good time or some, some other time? Do I need to come back? Uh, do we have the right people in the room? And then I'm going to go for a close. Close on that appointment. 
hey, if I could get a close on the product or service, I would do that too, okay? Again, this is 100 pages. I'm doing this in 25 minutes, 30 minutes today. Golden rules of prospecting. Number one, never rely on one form of communication. And we're going to do some questions, some Q&A after this. Never rely on one form of communication, ever, ever. You want to know why? You got more teeth than you got attempts, okay? You wouldn't have, you wouldn't need a meal with one tooth, okay? God gave you a whole set of teeth. How many teeth do we have? 52 teeth? Check out how many teeth we got, man, okay? You got more teeth than most people make attempts, okay? So the point is never rely on one form of community. How many? 32 teeth, okay? 32 teeth. You got 32 teeth. You should have 32 attempts minimum, okay? Number two, prospecting is a priority in your business. You have to make a commitment that prospecting is the lifeblood of your business. And number three, ask for help. When I prospect Scott and Scott says, not yet, no, I'm not interested, call me later, Scott goes on a list called help. So that when I call on Jared or Burt, uh, Brad Burks, and Brad said, yeah, man, I'm with you. I'm going to do the deal. We're going to buy, we're going to do sales training with Grant Cardone companies, right? We're all in. Then when I close Brad, I'm going to say, Brad, do you know anybody on this list is called the help list? And maybe people that I've been trying to warm up, he says, I know this cat, Scott. Hell, I work with him. Okay, work with him three times a year on a charity event. So Brad can then push me to Scott and help me. So always ask for help when it comes to prospecting. Look, I know there's a lot of information, tremendous amount of information. Let's face it. We got your attention today. We got your attention today, okay? You got to thank Armanino. You got to thank Microsoft, Click Dimensions. You got to thank Inside Sales. They brought you some great content. If you walk away with one or two things today, it's this, okay? Number one, you got to make a commitment to prospecting. Number two, you need to be using technology. For you not to use technology today is foolish. It's foolish. It's expensive not to use technology. And technology doesn't mean something just new, okay? It means something. Let's use old technologies. Let's combine them. And the third thing I want you to walk away with, with is this. No technology is any good without a person behind it that is excited, passionate, freaked out, and ready to use that techno technology. Don't bl blame the technology. Never blame the technology. Blame the user, okay? So anything I can do to help you, if you want a copy of this ebook, if you go to grantcardone.com forward slash pipeline, grantcardone.com forward slash pipeline, um, happy to give you that so you can look it over it yourself. We're going to be taking some Q&A. Also, I have a university, Grant Cardone, or cardoneuniversity.com, where prospecting full-blown prospecting with scripts, prompts, cold calls. There's over 1,500 video segments there. You're always uh, welcome to go check out Cardone U. I think there's a free password there, cardoneu.com. It's all video content. So again, I want to thank Scott for having me as part of the web webcast today. I also want to thank Armanino, uh, Inside Sales, Click Dimensions, Microsoft, not just for putting this webcast together, but for providing entrepreneurs like myself with unbelievable technology so that I can do what I want to do, which is I want to grow my business. I want to scale it. I want to make sure people know me. I believe in my product and my service, and you guys give me unbelievable technology so I can do that. Um, Brad Burks from Click Dimensions is going to take it away. I think uh, G, uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe Larson from Inside Sales and, and uh, Brad are going to, because they have real-world experience using these technologies every day, uh, they're going to be asking some questions. Let's do this.